I'm a planetary volcanologist. I started out as an astronomer, but I became really interested in planetary geology, and my PhD advisor was a volcanologist. So I uh, started learning about volcanoes on Earth and volcanoes on Mars. Eventually, I came to JPL, and uh, I went to work on the Galileo mission to Jupiter. And my job as a planetary volcanologist was to study Jupiter's moon Io. Io is the only place in the solar system other than Earth that has large-scale volcanic silica eruptions. Uh, that's uh, lavas like uh, we see on Earth. And uh, it was a very exciting period of my career uh, during which I discovered 71 volcanoes on Io that had never been seen before as being active. Uh, and uh, eventually with that, I ended up in the Guinness Book of World Records in 2006. And uh, that was very funny, but it was also a lot of fun because it's not something that I ever expected to, to do, <laughs> to be uh, in the Guinness Book of World Records. I uh, actually have the book, uh, uh, the 2006 book, which mentions me. And, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Io is surprising. Uh, before the Voyager spacecraft got to Io in 1979, uh, we didn't think that Io could be volcanically active uh, because Io is about the size of the Earth's moon and it should have cooled a long time ago. But in fact, only two weeks before the Voyager spacecraft flew by Io and discovered these active volcanoes, a uh, scientific paper came out uh, by some uh, theoreticians uh, and they studied the orbit of Io around Jupiter and they predicted that Io might be volcanically active. It, it was an amazing prediction. I think one of the best of all time. Uh, and what happens is that, um, you know, Io uh, is attracted by Jupiter's gravity. Jupiter is this big planet. And so Io has uh, tides. Uh, the, the Earth has tides in the ocean, but Io has crustal tides, so, um, you know, the whole surface, you know, wants to inflate and, uh, and, and face Jupiter. But what happens is that there are these other moons that are on the other side, and they also pull Io and its crustal bulge towards them, and so there is a lot of flexing in the interior is what causes the heating and keeps the interior molten. So volcanism on Io can occur uh, because of uh, these tides, tidal forces, and that's something we didn't know about uh, before we uh, uh, studied Io. Um, the Earth has plate tectonics and the location of the volcanoes, the whole uh, volcanism on Earth is controlled by plate tectonics. Uh, no other planet in the solar system that we know of, or moon, has plate tectonics. Um, so studying other planets can really tell us a lot about the physics uh, of processes such as volcanism uh, that um, uh, you know we wouldn't know about if we only looked at the Earth. Another of the important discoveries made by the Galileo spacecraft was about Jupiter's moon Europa. Now Europa is the next moon. Uh, uh, it's further away from Jupiter than Io is. There are four Galilean satellites. They were discovered by Galileo using his telescope. They are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Uh, now, uh, Europa is an icy moon, so there is a, a crust of ice on the surface. It's very different from Io. And under that ice, there is an ocean of liquid water. Now, Europa also... Um, uh, suffers a little bit from the tidal heating that heats up the interior of Io, but less. But we think there is volcanism in the interior, uh, and in fact there is some evidence that uh, some plumes of water actually have uh, uh, you know, come to the surface and um, into space. And if you have water and if you have heat, those are two of the ingredients that you need for life. So Europa is one of the places uh, that we are really interested in uh, looking for life. Other uh, moons, icy moons in the solar system where we think that life may have developed are uh, Enceladus and Titan, which are moons of Saturn. And in fact, after the Galileo mission, I joined the Cassini mission, 
And I studied Titan, and I studied uh, the volcanoes on Titan, which are cryovolcanoes, those are ice volcanoes. And at the moment, my latest research project is actually studying the potential habitability of Titan. That is, could life have developed uh, in the ocean underneath Titan's icy crust? A cryovolcano uh, is, is a form of volcanism where the physics is similar to silicate volcanism. Silicate volcanism is the volcanism you see on Earth. You know, the volcanoes that erupt in the Philippines and west coast of the U.S. and Indonesia uh, have uh, uh, silicate lava in Hawaii uh, as well. Uh, but uh, on icy moons of the solar system, uh, you have a crust of ice instead of a crust of rock. And then under that, you have liquid water. You have global oceans of liquid water uh, with some other things like perhaps methane or ammonia. Uh, but um, uh, so the, the magma in those moons, it's not molten rock. The magma is essentially water from this, this layer, uh, this uh, uh, subsurface uh, ocean. And uh, if the material from that uh, ocean can come up to the surface through the ice crust, that's what we call cryovolcanism. So what erupts is essentially uh, water, water vapor, slushy ice. Uh, so uh, it, 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 it's very different, but it's still volcanism because volcanism is the process that brings material from the interior to the surface. I'm also the editor-in-chief of Icarus. Icarus is a planetary science journal started by Carl Sagan to be a home for planetary scientists to publish their research. My job as editor-in-chief is to ensure uh, that um, the manuscripts that are sent in are properly reviewed by other scientists uh, who make comments and they are improved and, uh, uh, and what is published is um, the best science possible. Uh, we respond to the community. So uh, if there is a new mission, uh, we might have a special issue that uh, uh, publishes results from that mission. We often do that. If there is a special topic that we are interested in, again, we encourage the community to uh, publish in that topic. Uh, but by and large, we don't direct research. We just ensure that the published research is of the highest possible quality. Uh, and uh, some types of papers that I would like to see in the journal, well, going back to my favorite topic of volcanism, uh, for example, there is still a lot of research we need to do on cryovolcanism and how exactly cryovolcanoes erupt. Uh, and, uh, and this is a difficult topic uh, because, as I explained, uh, you have liquid water underneath an icy crust, and the liquid water needs to, you know, punch through this ice crust to erupt. Now, if you think about it, ice cubes float, so there is a density contrast that is a little bit difficult to, to work out, uh, and, uh, and there is still a lot in the physics that we need to work out. So I'd like to see more papers uh, in uh, addressing that topic, but that's, uh, that's my personal bias. Uh, my uh, job as editor-in-chief is to ensure that excellent research uh, is published.